Welcome back everyone. What you're looking at here is version 2 of my HHO full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, we're getting a bit of gas now so I think the next logical step is going to be to finish off my chamber and build a bubbler, get a flashback arrestor and do some litres per minute testing on these plates. Um, I can't leave this running for too long because the air becomes a bit volatile. I'll take you up to the top. So you can see it's bubbling away. Very fine bubbles so it's sort of deceiving because there is a lot of gas coming out of there. A lot of gas. It's coming up across the whole surface. You can even see sort of like vapor coming out of the um, out of the top. Take it back down. So you can see the chamber is pretty much saturated with um, with bubbles of gas bubbles very very fine a lot of vapor coming out of the top I don't want to light it because I've done it before and you know, I can actually light pockets of gas from nearly a foot away from the uh, from the cell so I'll be turning it off in a second but yeah some very good gas production there um, there's about uh, three or four teaspoons of baking soda in this cell switch it off now So this is the circuit you just saw in action producing HHO. A uh, couple of changes that we've made since the last version. Um, firstly, D4, that diode was re already replaced with the HHO electrodes. Um, I have since then replaced D3 uh, with the HHO electrodes as well. So they're both going out to the same container sharing the same cell um, one set of plates is producing HHO on one rectified pulse of the um, DC the other one is producing HHO on the opposite polarity pulse so on every rectified pulse the positive and the negative peaks uh, we're producing HHO and they're alternating at um, 50 hertz, so 100 cycles per second, and that's how we're producing our HHO. I've tested that theory, and um, that's definitely what's happening. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I have replaced D1 and D2 with some more high power diodes, so these BYR29800s. Uh, they're rated to 8 amps, but you know, that depends on you know, the circuit. Um, I, I think we could easily get, a, get about 10 amps out of them. Now I did mention in the last video that I was going to try and put more of a load onto this circuit on the, um, on the output of the bridge rectifier to try and draw more current through the rectifier itself which in theory was going to draw more current through these plates and produce more HHO. Um, that did work but only up to about you know one and a half amps or thereabouts after which um, all HHO production ceased but somehow the current found its way through to actually power the load so the load was still um, working but somehow the production of HHO had stopped so I don't know how that worked but that didn't help us at all so I removed the load, um, we left C1 on there 
because the voltage drop across D3 and D4 was high enough to produce a, um, a, a, a bit of a reduction in HHO. So I found that leaving C1 on there kept the voltage in the rectifier at 12 volts and counteracted that voltage drop which helped us to maintain our HHO production rate. Um, so now I'm thinking the only way that we're going to be able to increase production apart from using electrolyte which is not something that I'm favouring or leaning towards uh, is to increase the frequency of the AC signal coming into the rectifier uh, because of the fact that D3 and D4 are producing the HHO on every rectified peak. So if we put more peaks in there, we're going to get more production of um, HHO. So if anybody knows how I can somehow alter the um, mains frequency that's coming into this rectifier, uh, from 50 hertz to say a few kilohertz or 20 kilohertz or more um, whether it be using some sort of uh, LC tank circuit across the input or whatever it may be uh, I would love to see a schematic otherwise I'll be doing my own research um, but generally I really believe that increasing the frequency will increase HHO it sounds pretty logical to me um, and in doing that it would be good to see what that does to the voltage and the current across the input and the, um, the output and see if it means that we need to change our capacitance there. What you're looking at there are the three main components of the circuit. The brown box thing on the left hand side is the AC power supply. Uh, this thing here in the middle is the the main circuit that does all the work. Um, looks like a bit of a mess but I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. And then that goes out to the electrodes. As you can see I've got one for one diode and the other ones for the other diode. Um, so we'll start here from the AC power supply. I'll just see if I can zoom in for you a bit better here. There we go. So we've got two 40 volts going in, 12 volts AC, 15 amps, capable of 15 amps coming out. Um, just so that anyone doesn't think there's any shifty, bodgy stuff going on here with center tap transformers and rectifying things in, in the box here before it goes out, I'll show you quickly what we've got. Um, AC comes in here, that's the primary. The secondary out here, so you can see that's one wire, that's the other wire. That one there just comes straight out to the outlet plug here. The other one goes up to a fuse, which you can see there. Um, but there is no fuse in there, so I've just used these jumper cables to bridge the connections. There you can see there, so that's not fused anymore. Um, so that goes straight out to the circuit as I said. These are the diodes so I've got one here and I've also got this earth lug just in case something goes wrong and that's connected to the earth on the AC power supply. Um, I've still got my 5600 UF 40 volt cap because it seemed to work pretty well so we didn't do much, all we did was increase the current on the diode so stuck with that cap and over here on this side you can just see the other diode. Uh, now the reason it's so messy is because you can see these terminals on these diodes and the massive solder joints from my heavy duty wires. Um, I decided to just weave them in and out so you can see here this blue one goes out here and just comes around weaves out and pops out here that way these connections are solid they're not going to move anywhere no matter what I do with this wire um, I'm not going to have any problems with the terminals breaking off the diodes 
So that's the underside of the um, circuit, as you can see, as I said, just the wire woven in and out, back around to the other side. Nothing hidden away, no surprises, simple bridge rectifier. Now I've also got this same light bulb from the previous video, the 100 milliamp 12 volt globe. Um, the only reason I've got that connected at the moment is because it makes it easier to see the bubbles on camera um, through the side of the glass and as well as that it also helps just in case something goes wrong we know if we've got power going through the circuit or not if this light bulb's lighting up then we're all good if not there's a problem um, so it's a good little indicator okay so that's the setup and I guess the next step now is going to be to finish off a chamber and we actually use the gas to do some work and run some sort of engine that if anyone knows how to increase the um, frequency of the AC coming in from 50 Hertz to anywhere in the kilohertz range that would be great I'd love to hear from you leave a comment so that's about it for this update thanks for watching and see you next time